In today's video, we're gonna show you the installation of a Tesla Powerwall 2. We have Tesla Powerwall with gateway being fitted under here. We need to run power and communications between the two. So that's gonna go under the floor, into this room, up by this soil stack and into the garage. Follow me. Just watch your step. Then we're gonna come through this wall on the other side, across and into our power wall location just here. So the customer said this morning he's worried about this little piece of damp, low level down here, and that if we can raise the power wall, can we do it? Um, not too worried about that because it does sit on some little feet anyway, but it may end up hanging it off the wall a little bit higher. Enough. Then, I thought that was going to be loose under there because of the void. Pull it, pull it. It's probably, it's probably, it's probably clipped it underneath. Because last time we came, this was all up. You might be able to get a rod. Who's got a phone? Phone light. Yeah, that's going to be solid, isn't it? We may not have yeah. to make a hole. We might be able to rod through and just pop up this up the corner here. We need to get cables from over there to here. And the plan was to, because this, this isn't turning at the other end yet, is to pull this through with a draw wire. And then we can read sort of tape on our cables to this and then put it all back through in one go. But this has been snagged or clipped or something underneath, so it doesn't actually pull. So we've got to try and rod from here to there which isn't a massive distance, but maybe a bit tricky. Gotcha. You got it, yeah? Yeah, look yeah, at that. Yeah, that hole you're through is no good, though. First time. What do you mean, no good? That hole there is going to be too tight to get our cables through. It is my birthday. It is my birthday. It's my birthday today. Is it? Did you birthday, birthday today? Yeah. So it's going little, little, to be a little birthday treat, wouldn't it, if do it goes a, through first time? Do you want a present? My, I would take the present as if this goes through first time. That would be a good gift. Thing. <laughs> I'm stuck at the first hurdle. Oh, no, here we go. Here we go. The armoured's through, but I think with the, with the flex on the side, it's getting snagged. It's getting stuck. Can you put it quite, can you put it a bit harder or is it gonna go? Yeah. Go on, give it, give it a yank, see what happens. Nah. Nah, nah, back to me. I can't even see it. It's not, it's not gone through this. Hole. The issue we've got is we've got a little uh, knee wall, I think they call it, over there. So you've got these little brick walls underneath here that pick up the floor joists. We've got one here, and there's another one over there. Luckily, we can sort of see them, so we could potentially drill them, but it might be quite hard to drill them and get the rods through both ends. Give it a drill and see how we get on. Right, I'm going to push through again now. It went too well last time. Yeah. Yeah? We're further than last time. It's going. There she goes. Yes. Look at that. Wallop. Happy birthday. Uh, yeah, it's a lovely little birthday gift there. Tesla comes with backup power as a standard part of the kit and has 13 and a half kilowatt hours worth of storage with 100% depth of discharge. The power wall preconditions itself by using very small amounts of energy to heat itself up in cold weather to ensure maximum efficiency when charging. Tesla's unique liquid thermal management system allows it to work more efficiently than any other home battery in cold weather. If you'd like us to compare the top three batteries on the market, leave a comment below. So this is the Tesla Gateway. The job we're installing on today has already got solar. So we use one of these CT clamps. It just plugs into here and allows us to monitor the solar that's already been installed on site. The main supply comes into these terminals. We then take the load out of these terminals here, which then supplies the rest of the home. The gateway is the brains of the system and must be fitted alongside the power wall. You can have up to 10 power walls per gateway. The gateway is also the kit that makes backup possible by automatically disconnecting the grid supply during a power outage. So we're going to take this over to Rob. He's going to fit it on the wall next to the consumer unit and the incoming meter. And uh, he'll show you how to wire it. You see it now? I'll be amazed. I got you. He... You got it? Yep. Nice. You must have thrown loads of that in here. It's all bent up around the corner. Yeah, beautiful. It's ready for some clipping. 
So we've got our supply head with the power coming in. This comes into the meter, currently comes out of the meter into this isolator switch and into these two connector blocks here, which then supply the consumer unit. What we're going to do is remove this link from here. We're going to take the towers from here into our gateway, which is then fed into this cartridge fuse here, which then runs through the gateway, back out of our home, comes back down and then joins back into these blocks here to then again supply the home. Robbo, are you safe in there so I can turn it on? All right, so that's all good. That's all nice, neutrals. There she goes. So the plan is to pull this down because it's all going to be redone anyway. And then that allows us to drill straight through into the ceiling void because this ceiling is slightly lower than on inside. By the time we drill through up here somewhere, there's a boxing in going across here as well. We'll drill straight through here into the ceiling void and it keeps the cables all concealed all the way until we get to the power wall where we drop down. Beautiful, George. You got it? Yeah. If we just lean it up against the skip for now. So my nice shiny head. Oh what is that not for? Win? No, keep going. That's all. That's full. Full thing again. Keep going. Back. Beautiful. Right, so now we can poke the cables through, get them clipped along here, and away we go. Right, so we've got three cables we're putting through. We've got a six mil armoured, which is AC, which is power from the gateway to the power wall. And we've then got a Cat6 shielded cable and a, just a three core flex, which is just comms between power wall and gateway. Yep, go on. Yeah? Yep. You pulling it through, yeah? I'm trying. Well, somehow I'm stuck. I'm trying, yeah. It's You're not really moving. Trying. I need to get a f***ing ladder then. <sighs> they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Uh, just pull the grey one. Is that it? No, go on, keep going. Now the black one. Where I'm doing this hole to bring these cables through, I've got to go 100 mil off the joist, uh, but they've got to stay separate. So I was just thinking about where my next hole's going to be, so then we can start clipping down afterwards. Cool. Right, Georgie, your work here is done. Thank you, mate. So the cable's going to come across the top here on this joist here. We'll drop straight down <clears throat> into the top of a rotary for our AC power and then the commons will follow down in a bit of conduit and then just swoop into the side of the battery. Mm. Oh, to me then, if we can. That, that looks pretty good. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. I think it's come to me a little bit. Slightly, we can do that when we're up, can't we? Because we've got to go up again. Ready? Two. Oh, that's gone. Do you need to lift or do I need to lift? Lift, I think we need to lift off. What's happened here is this end's gone in. This end the, on the bracket is that you've got little hooks behind. This end we've just missed it. But the way the Tesla bracket works is there's like a little latch if you like. And once it goes in, this latch comes out to stop you from lifting and taking the battery off. But obviously that latch is now in. So now we need to get it back off to realign it, but we're struggling a little bit with it. So. I need to pull out and up. This side up, but pull the top out. It's off, isn't it? It should be off. Ah, oh, it's back on now. Oh, it's joking okay. now. And come out. That's it. Right. Oh, we're off. It's where that step's so far back, isn't it? I think. 
I am not overly sure it's that. It's, I think you just missed, just got to get them on the first time. Let's try again. Ready? Mm. Three, two, one. That's it, isn't it? That felt better. Yeah. That's it. That went on. Oh. Well, listen, she's in. So, rotary, bit of copex. Oh. Well, there we go. I didn't mention this at the beginning, but the Tesla also has a feature called Stormwatch. It automatically prepares the Powerwall system for the possibility of a power cut during extreme weather conditions by ensuring charges in the battery for when you need it. The software continuously runs an energy forecast, learning the patterns of your energy use and seasonal solar production. For example, the Powerwall will know solar production is going to be poor tomorrow, so we'll charge to a certain percentage from the grid at off-peak times to ensure the home is running on solar energy or off-peak prices. Thanks for watching the video. There'll be a couple of videos pop up on the screen that YouTube thinks you may like. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> That's your turn, that. Yeah, cut.